Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to look at an antenna that I put together for field day and POTA use. So the antenna in question is a multi-band linked dipole. Now I've made one in the past just for 40 and 20, but this one will cover most of the hand bands between 6 and 80 meters. And before we get too far into the details of the antenna, I'll let you know that at the end of the video I'll post some slides with all of the lengths of the different pieces of wire I cut in case you're interested. So just to give you a basic overview of the antenna before we look at the details, you may be able to see over there behind me the center support for the antenna. And that's comprised of four sections of surplus military fiberglass canopy poles along with one of the canopy spreaders on top. And then on either end of the dipole I've got two sections of the fiberglass poles supporting the ends. So here's a closer look at the center support. As I said before, there's just four sections of surplus military canopy poles here that are just pushed together and held up with a piece of rebar that's pounded in the ground that's inside the poles there. And then if I span up the poles, hopefully you can see up at the top, I've got one of the canopy spreaders up there as my center insulator. So I'll take that down in a minute and we'll take a closer look at the feed point and how I've got all that configured. And you should also be able to see the two legs of the dipole coming off opposite sides of the center insulator there. And then the wire just spans across and is connected to a similar arrangement of poles over on the ends. Let's go take a look at that. So I've got the paracord tied off at the top of the pole and then I've just got it looped through the ring terminal and then tied off on this stanchion here that I use for a different antenna configuration. Now rather than tie this off, it's just wrapped around here and it's plenty secure to hold that. Keep in mind this is a temporary antenna, it's not meant to be left up for any length of time, a couple hours at most. Now the whole point of this is to be able to quickly lower it if I want to get at one of the links and change the band of the antenna. So what I'll do next is take the antenna down. I have to anyway because it's in the way of that gravel pile that someone's coming to spread for me tomorrow. Now like I said before, to lower the wire all I have to do is loosen it up from that support and just kind of gradually let it down. And then I can just lift the pole off of my piece of rebar here and set it down. And I'll do the same thing on this side of the antenna. So with the two ends free, I can lower the center section. You may have noticed that when I lifted this up and started to tilt it down, the antenna got a little wobbly. What I found works best is to get the bottom of the pole against the center support bar here and then use that as leverage to help walk it down. So here's a closer look at my feed point and center insulator. You can see I've constructed it from one of the canopy spreaders that fits on these fiberglass poles. So you can see I'm feeding the antenna with this piece of RG8 that I found in my spare coax box. Now this piece is about 12 feet long. It's not really measured to any particular length, but it is long enough so that I can reach it easily when the antenna is in the air. And then I can use a barrel connector to connect to the other end and then to a piece of longer coax and then ultimately to my radio. Now the length of this isn't critical, it's just the length of the piece that I had laying around. So in particular at the feed point here you can see that I'm just using ring terminals and quarter 20 hardware that's readily available and inexpensive at places like Tractor Supply. So I've got the ring terminals crimped to the coax, one to the shield and one to the center connector and then through the quarter 20 hardware and then you may be able to see there's another ring terminal there and that is crimped and soldered to this piece of 14 gauge bare copper wire that runs through holes that I drilled. So the reason I have these sort of multiple points on here is so that I could configure this as a fan dipole if I wanted to with legs coming out at each one of these sections. There would be three per side. But for right now I opted not to do that and just stick with the linked dipole configuration. And of course I've got the two legs of my dipole coming off and I've got one connected to one side of the feed point and one of these three points and then one connected to the other side and one of these three points. 
So you can see there's the feed point of the antenna. And then if I follow the first leg of the dipole over to the first link, let's take a look at how I have these constructed. So first off, this first link and its mate on the other side are cut and trimmed for the sideband portion of the six meter band. So the link is constructed with a piece of scrap cutting board from Walmart and more of that quarter 20 hardware that I got from Tractor Supply. The link itself is just a couple of ring terminals crimped and soldered to a short piece of bare 14 gauge copper wire. So in this current configuration, the six meter leg of the dipole is connected to and through the link and then over to the next section, which is the 10 meter section. So if I wanna operate on just six meters, all I have to do is undo this nut and this one as well, and then pop this link off of here. Okay, and then just so I don't lose the link, I'm gonna put it back on and let it dangle. So then I would go to the opposite leg over on that side of the dipole, do the same thing. Then what I can do is put the antenna back up and you can see that mechanically we still have the support because of the insulator here, but we don't have the electrical connection. So the antenna will work and be resonant on just six meters. And then the same holds true for all the different links down the leg. Now some people like to use some type of connector here, maybe an Anderson power pole or an automotive coupler or something so that they can easily make or break the link. But since I'm a cheapskate and Anderson power poles are kind of pricey, I opted to use this method instead, especially since I already had all this stuff in my garage. I didn't have to order anything to make this. So you may have also noticed that I used some colored electrical tape just to color code my wires so that if I take this thing apart, I don't lose track of it. So if we go down the length of the wire, you can see my first leg is for six meters. My second leg is for 10. My third is for 15. And then I have a section for 20. And then 40. And then of course the very end of the antenna is the 80 meter section. And as I said earlier, at the very end of the antenna, I just use a single ring terminal, feed my paracord through that, and we're good to go. So I want to apologize, I didn't record any footage while I was actually constructing this antenna, but it's pretty straightforward. I just had the canopy here, and all I really did was drill two holes in each one of these corner sections, one small hole in the very corner, large enough to pass the copper wire through, and then a bigger hole for the quarter 20 hardware to slip into. Now, one thing that I haven't done yet, but I do plan to do, is to drill a single hole in the very end of the canopy spreader here so that I can put an eye hook at the end and then hang this thing from a tree or some other support if I want to do that instead of use the poles for the support. So the wire I'm using is 14 gauge stranded THHN wire that you can pick up relatively inexpensively at places like Home Depot, Lowe's, or any hardware store for that matter probably has it. So to pack the antenna up for storage, I'm just using one of these extension cord winders that you can get pretty cheap at Home Depot or at a hardware store. So I probably could fit both legs on one of these, but I do have a second one for the other leg just so the wires don't get tangled. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I didn't really take any footage when I was building the antenna. So what I did is I came up with a quick sketch just to kind of show the configuration of the antenna. So this line down at the bottom represents one leg or one half of the dipole. And the little ovals here represent the links in between each wire. Now down at the bottom here, you can see that I've put my actual measurements from the wires that I cut for each of the individual links. So for instance, six meters is 52 and a half inches, 10 meters is 43 inches, so on and so forth. And along the top here, I just did the math and added up the lengths of the wire to come up with the actual measurement of the leg at each band. Now this number here does not include the length of the little link. Each link will add about two and a half inches or so to the actual length that I've got listed here. So in other words, if you were to measure this, it would be a little bit longer than what I'm listing here. But this is just to give you a ballpark idea of how long 
the overall leg is at the end of each link. Okay, so I've got everything broken down and loaded up in the back of the SUV here and ready for field day. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. If you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.